Hey folks, this is Gray here. And I got a couple of things here in front of me and I wanna explain what this is. Because basically for the next few videos, I'm gonna be doing, I, I thought what I was gonna do is kinda of do them all at one time, but that would be a really long video. So we're gonna break each video down uh, into three different videos themselves. So Obi, which is the sister company of Olite, uh, everybody's having these summer sales. Uh, so today in the video, we're gonna be focusing on the Century L1. Uh, is it an EDC knife and what could it be used for? Uh, we'll take a look at the specs, kind of look at the knife itself, and uh, kind of do a quick overview of the knife. And then down the road, I have some ideas that I'm going to be using a bunch of different knives uh, in a practical application. So that being said, uh, I also have the O-Lantern Musics, uh, which is a lantern that I've had for quite some time and uh, accidentally showed it on a video a while back. Uh, that <laughs> was kind of funny, but wasn't funny, you know what I mean? And uh, so we're going to be going over the O-Lantern Musics uh, in a separate video, as well as the Seeker 4 Pro. I did some night shots on this the other night, and I was thoroughly impressed. I like the functionality of it and whatnot. But all these products, and the reason I wanted to kind of throw these products at you at one time is because sometimes I'm late to the game. So Obi is celebrating their one-year anniversary, so they have all these blowout deals and all kinds of different things on sale. Uh, specifically, they sent me this Century uh, L1 knife to show you guys, my viewers, and to kind of introduce their sale. So all the links will be down in the descriptions if you guys care to take a look at their sales. Sometimes you get freebies and there's all kinds of giveaways and stuff like that going on these sales, uh, as well as Olight's uh, sale as well. So I'll put all the links uh, in each one of these videos so that you guys can check that out. Uh, sometimes just for signing up, you can get a free gift or spending you know a few bucks here or there, you get free gifts. Uh, if you're familiar with the Olight and the Obi brand. All right, folks, enough of that, of the jibber jabber rambling on that I'll usually do. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Century L1 and then stay tuned for future videos throughout the week in regards to the rest of the product. But just don't forget that they do have these sales going on. Uh, I think I'll throw something up on the screen because some of them I think may go through September 30th or at the end of the month, which is, I think is the 30th as well. All right, so let's take a close up look at the Century L1. First, let's see what's inside the box. Some folks like to see what's inside these boxes. And uh, of course, the knife will not be in there because it's right there. <laughs> Let's open this up here. And usually you'll get uh, these little uh, kind of uh, morale patches and whatnot. Uh, they all have different things, but they have like that Velcro packaging on the outside. Uh, I've been starting to collect these just because why not? Uh, I like collecting the, the magnets and these patches. Uh, but pretty cool, the thought that they put into some of this stuff. And then you're going to get this little pouch here. Uh, if you wanted to store the knife in the pouch, you could. Some people like that. And this knife is a big, this is a big knife, folks. As you can see, it fits in there, though. And uh, some people will kind of like, you know, put that in a pack or whatnot just to keep it. But me, personally, I usually utilize a knife by using the clip right here. All right, so let's take a look at the knife. Let's get this stuff out the way and take a close-up look at the knife itself. Move that over. All right, so let's go ahead and just take a look at the blade itself because a lot of knives, you know, when it comes to it, a lot of people are really interested in the blade. So this blade is a black titanium coated stone wash. Um, I don't know if you can see that stone wash in there because you're going to see some wear and tear on this knife because why, you know, talk about a knife and do a review on it if you haven't used it. So I've used, the, used this thing tremendously on a lot of different things. Uh, you can use this knife from anything outdoors or to even cutting meats and doing stuff in the kitchen. So it's kind of a multi-purpose knife. Uh, or if you're outdoors cooking or barbecuing or whatnot, those are some of the options that you can do with this. Now, uh, let's kind of look at this. Some people want to see how it flips open. So basically, I use it here. That's how I open the knife. As you can see, it opens really nice, uh, very smooth, uh, even after all the abuse that I've put it through. Uh, then you got some folks that want to be a little bit more on the stealthy side and kind of slowly open that knife. Uh, so you have that, which is, you can call it a thumb hole or whatnot. Everybody has their, there's a technical name for it, but I'll go over some of the technical names on some of the other parts of the knife. And then, of course, you have the really cool people that, uh, for some reason, to me, this knife is kind of big to do that, but they'll do the whole flipper thing, uh, as they call it, the flipper hole, and it kind of pops out there. Again, this knife will close on its own, as you can see there. Uh, I, it's hard to do it one-handed over here, like, on the camera, but it does have a good weight to it where it cuts, where it will close uh, effectively. Now, let's talk about the handle itself. As you can see here, this has a really nice clip on here. Uh, I like the clip. The clip is robust enough to keep it in place, but also flexible enough 
to make it easily slide into your uh, pant pocket or wherever that you happen to apply this, this clip at. It also has a spot if you wanted to use a, let's say some uh, paracord or any type of attachment here that you want to use it for, just wrap around your wrist uh, to keep the knife in place. Some folks may ask what the material of the handle is, and a lot of blades these days are coming with these G10. Uh, this is a G10 handle here, as you can see. Uh, it has that texture on there, so if your hands get bloody, wet, you know, kind of got some stuff on there, you're still going to be able to hold that knife. Uh, as you can see, that grip pretty much fits my hand. I got a big hand, so to me this feels great. If you have small hands, maybe not so much. But as you can see, it kind of like has that nice holding power there. So when I actually use this now, if you use like, so let's like look at the choil here. So this is a part where you'd usually put your finger at. A lot of knives don't have that, you know, they're very small, they have big blades, but you can't really get your finger in there without worrying about getting cut by this blade because these blades sometimes are razor sharp depending on if you keep your knife sharpened. So I like the fact that I can get my finger in here and then right here on, on the jimping on the back of that, and it's it's very robust. You can see the thickness of this blade we'll talk about here in a second. But so when I want to put my finger there, put my thumb here and do something a little bit more fine, you know what I mean? Like I say, if you're going to feather some wood uh, or if you need to, you know, chop, whatever you want that you need to have your fingers in these placement spots, that's to me this is a great knife in the aspect that it has that space for it and it has enough robust jimping on there that it's not going to slip. So if I'm applying pressure to something, I don't have to worry about my finger being cut or, or my thumb slipping off this part here. Because uh, sometimes it's just more aesthetic. This is actually useful and you can actually apply these spots on the knife. All right, so this is a cleaver style blade. Uh, some of you guys have seen other blades that I've done in the past uh, in regards to cleaver style. Uh, I'm trying to see if the thickness of the blade itself, I think, uh, I know the blade length is 3.9 or a little under 4 inches, but we can throw this on here and kind of get an idea of the knife right there. And you can see that the blade right up to where the handle is, is about right about 4 inches, uh, give or take, right? And uh, so the overall length of the knife, for some of the folks, you can kind of see that there. It's about a little under nine inches. Uh, they have it uh, on their website around nine and three quarters, but I don't see that. Uh, but to me, it's right around, I mean, I guess depending on where, you're, if you're going from corner to corner, then yeah, it's about nine and a half there. But if you're going just kind of holding it there, it's about nine inches or so. It doesn't have to be exact, but you kind of going to get the idea. Now, this here, matter of fact, you should keep the tape out, right? In regards to the blade thickness, you're looking at almost... Is that about an eighth inch? If I can hold it there straight without shaking because I'm getting old. There you go. Looks like about an eighth inch thick. So that's a solid thick spine there on that blade. And like I said, the weight of the blade itself as well has that cleaver style because when you want something heavy when you're trying to, you know, chop at stuff. So if you're chopping at wood or if you're chopping at some meat, uh, let's say some ribs or something like that, or you're trying to, you know, just push through something like that, having that extra weight uh, is going to be very beneficial to you folks out there, at least from my perspective. And again, this is always my perspective. The edge type is a kind of a plain edge blade there, you know what I mean? Again, because the blade is a cleaver. Um, it is a liner lock. As you can see the inside there, that liner lock right there. Uh, that's how you would disengage the blade by pushing that over to close the blade. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of cheap knives out there and they won't have a full-size body liner lock. Because there's frame locks, there's liner locks, there's all different kinds of different types of uh, mechanisms that knives use. But as you can see, that liner in there goes all the way across there. And it, it's hard to see. I don't, yeah, you can see that on camera. See how far it comes over? Basically, it's preventing that knife from coming back on your finger. So it sets in a good spot where it's not going to create some issues down the road, especially if you're, you know, you don't, the last thing you want to do is if you're putting pressure on this, you don't want this blade to come down and cut all your fingers off. So always good to see when there's a full liner lock in there instead of the cheapos that have like a partial or some, you know, some, there's just uh, things that I just dislike about certain knives out there because some people will, will, will cheap out on a knife and then unfortunately they'll get hurt. But anyways, that's the kind of like the basics of the knife itself. I'm trying to think of anything else that you guys might want me to add to this other than, like I said, some of those are the specifications. Um, I mean, I didn't really go into the blade, you know, with... Uh, depending on where you go at, you know, you're right around two inches or so and it kind of goes from there depending on where you're at on that blade. Gives you an idea of that. Um, let me see here if you're just looking for the handle itself. So yeah, let's do that. We can fold this thing closed and see what, you know, kind of imprint it would be in your pocket. And you're looking about, it looks like about five and a quarter. And kind of looking at, trying to see it on their website, about five and three, seven inches. So pretty close enough, but about five and three quarters. 
Um, and like I said, this flipper, this part aspect right here, I like it just because it's quick. Has a nice mechanism in there. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, there's not much else I can say about it outside of when we take this thing out uh, with along with a few other knives and, and do some, you know, app, you know, things out on the woods so you can see how it works. Uh, other than me just talking about how much I like the knife. Uh, because every knife has a purpose. That's one thing I want you to take away from this video is every knife has a purpose. Depending on the knife that you have, every knife has a purpose. Uh, so when you're out going to buy a knife, make sure you buy a knife for whatever reason that you're going to be using it for. If you're going to be using it for EDC, if you're going to be using it for outdoors, bushcrafting, uh, you know, wood whittling, any, whatever it happens to be. If it's going to be for fishing, there's all different types of knives for all different types of applications. All right, folks. Uh, so to me, that's the, the basic overview of the Century L1. Uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, I'll put the price uh, on the screen here. Uh, if you guys are curious, like I said, it is on sale. They have a bunch of stuff going on outside of just this knife. Uh, but when they reach out to me, there's certain things they'll say, hey, are you interested in this? And when I saw this, I'm like, 100% I'm interested in that uh, because I can see the applications where I could use this knife. And uh, so far, all the other products that I've gotten from them in regards to Obi, which is a sister uh, company, again, to Olight, which, you know, focuses a lot on their EDC gear, backpacks, knives, all kinds of camping gear and whatnot. But uh, I like to play with them and see how well that they work. You know what I mean? Because there's knives out there that are three, four hundred. Matter of fact, in my shop, we have a knife that's over a thousand dollars. If I had a knife that was a thousand dollars, it would probably never leave the box. But <laughs> something like this, uh, I, something that I've been using, I've been having it in my pocket. Like I said, I've been using it for all different types of applications over the last couple of months, uh, and it's still kicking. And uh, I probably should clean it up, clean the blade up and whatnot, and get it sharpened back up. Uh, but I wanted to kind of put it through its paces before I showed it to you, my viewers. If you have any questions or comments about the knife, please leave them down below so that I can answer them. Uh, and there's other folks in the chat that may either already own one of these and can also further the information in regards to this video. And we're back. Uh, just to kind of wrap this up, again, you know, uh, check out the links in the description, check out the sales and whatnot. And uh, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments of the Century L1. Uh, it is a very intriguing knife. I've been using this knife for quite some time, probably over the last three months, and I've kind of put it through its paces. Uh, and I, I'd like to do some more with it and uh, get some, I mean, you can see some of the wear on the blade that I've, I've been using this thing for. Uh, and uh, I, I usually repeat myself, but, you know, like I said, uh, I've used it out in the woods. I've used it for at work. I've used it here in the home. Uh, and just generalized carrying it in my pocket to see the weight, how it felt on me. Uh, when I pull it out and how people's expressions are, because I do work in a shop that sells lots of knives and other EDC products. And it's, it's always to see their expression like, wow, man, that's a, that's a, that's a knife. And uh, so it's good to get feedback from people that actually get to physically touch it and use it and see it uh, when I hand it over to them in my shop. Uh, and they get to feel the weight of the knife and kind of look, take a look at the blade and whatnot. Anyways. Always looking forward to reading your comments. I truly appreciate uh, all the folks that do leave comments, uh, be it good comments, bad comments, whatever comments they may be. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think if that's all I wanted to say, and it probably is, other than, hey, folks, if you got any value out of the video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new here, please subscribe. It's always uh, appreciated. And uh, remember, folks, you are not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys on the rebound. God bless, and thank you again for watching.